Judges chapter 4 and in verse 4, the Bible said, Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidon, judged Israel at that time. We said that the word Deborah, the Hebrew Deborah, is B, B, the B you know, the honey B, the B that stings. So, if we say the Deborah generation, we are actually referring to the B generation. To know what it takes to be a member of the Deborah generation, it is important to know the character of the B and apply ourselves to that character. The Deborah generation, we said, from yesterday night's teaching, is the generation of limitless people. Nothing holds them back. Second, we said, is the generation of direction givers. They are generational direction givers. Thirdly, we said, is a generation of deliverers, solution providers. And fourthly, we said, is the generation of risk takers. And number five, we said, they are a generation of, let's call it, record breakers. Record makers, record setters, and record breakers. To be a member of this generation, what does it take? It takes operating the character of the bee. Because Deborah means bee. Now we are familiar with scriptures referring us to different animals. For example, in Proverbs chapter 6, it says, Go to the ant and learn. You sluggard. So he wants us to learn things. Huh? At another time, he told us, They that wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They mount up with wings like eagles. So he wants us to know how the eagle operates so we can know how to operate. The righteous are as bold as a lion. So he wants us to, to understand how a lion operates. In the same manner, if we are going to understand Deborah and the Deborah generation, we must understand the character of the bee and what the bee does. Number one, in the first service we say the bee represents honey production. Their first character we learned is the production of honey. They, they sweeten their generation. They add value to their generation. They add taste to the lives of people that come in contact with them. They carry emotional healing bound. Secondly, we said, the, gener the Deborah generation is a generation of industriousness, hard work, diligence. The B is known for industry. The B is known for hard work. We dealt with these two in the first service. Now, in the third service, we are looking at another two, or we dealt also with the vengeance dimension, which we didn't go in detail. In this second service, we are looking at their number three character and number four. And number three is the character of order, orderliness, or organization. They be, they have order. They have organization. They have protocol. I, I, will almost assume that the bee are one of the most orderly groups of creatures that God ever created. For example, in my study, I came across four different categories of, of bees in the same beehive with different divisions of labor. I saw the bee number one that goes for the nectar. B number two will take the job from there. It is they are called the worker bee. Carry the nectar, produce it into honey. Then we have the the queen bee. The queen. They are not responsible. They have a protruded big abdomen that is filled with eggs. Their assignment in the house is the replacement of dying bees. They produce, they just keep on multiplying. They feed them very well from the beginning and keep feeding them. And they cherish them and protect them very well for the sake of continuous production. If you are a man here, nourish your wife, cherish your wife, Protect her for the, for the reproductive assignment of her life. Not just biological children, but spiritual. 
Last year, we looked in this conference as what it means for a woman to give birth to destiny in her generation. And then we have the throne, which is like the masculine bee that is like the commander of the, of the fold whose assignment is the uh, mating with the, the female and reproduction. So you, you will notice that everyone has his assignment. There is an orderly division of labor. The worker bee cleans out also the beehive. They clean the beehive so that the place remains clean and perfect. They protect the young ones and produce the food for the little ones. What challenges me is that nobody is envying the assignment of the other. My challenge was that none of the bees, the worker bee is not saying you let the work alone for me. Everybody knows its duty and everybody faces its duty and I'm going to come to that very shortly. My dear brothers and sisters, if you want to see the wonders of God, you must order your life. The Deborah generation are not a disorganized people. It takes order to see wonders. Organization is the foundation for manifestation. A life in disorder is a life of disaster. And I speak it to anybody here. Starting from your personal study of the world. From your devotional life. To your financial life. To your marital life. To the scheduling of your day. Order, order, order your life. A disorderly life is a distracted life. And hear me, nothing outstanding can come out of disorder. A ministry not in order can never be outstanding. A business not in order can never be outstanding. A marriage not in order can never be outstanding. For example, maybe close to 15 years ago, I decided to order my finances. Everything that enters my hand is on record. And everything that leaves is recorded. And then, as the time went on, what percentage is tight? What percentage is prophet's offering? What percentage is free will offering? What percentage is to be saved? All that is ordered. And as God saw the financial order, he showed me financial wonder. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? There is nothing outstanding that can come out of this order. Take your sin. There are those money comes, the way it comes, the same way it goes, it's just scattered anyhow. Just give me five naira, get 30,000 there, and it's just scattered anywhere without a definite order. The Deborah generation is a generation of orderly people. In what order did you leave your room this morning? In what order will you meet it tonight? In what order do you leave your working space permanently where you work on your table? In what order do you order your relationship? Is God speaking to somebody here today? My wife and I, we have different schedules of work. And as we have different schedules of work, we order our lives as such. She would work something like till about 12 midnight, 1 a.m. or something, and sleep. And then because she needs to wake up 5 a.m. for morning devotion with the children. I will rest and then start work before she sleeps. And then I am going to sleep before around their devotion or before their devotion around their devotion or after, at times one hour after they have done devotion. Everybody knows his shadow. 
and it is ordered. Is God speaking to someone here today? Sit down. So, there is organization in the Deborah generation. There are so many of us, God is saying, the anointing I want to place on your life is too serious for the disorder I see in your life. The anointing I want to place on you is too serious for the disorganization of your life. It's too serious for the uncoordinated nature. The amount of resources I want to give you is too much for you. You don't even know how to keep a little accounting book. No accountability. Is too, I can't give you big money with this kind of disorder. God is saying, order your life today. You know that God cannot send you billions of contract what billions the way you are going now. Somebody is asking for God to give him a high car. Doesn't have a driver's license. Doesn't know how to drive. Is not ready to learn. There are things we pray that at times doesn't get answered quick because we confirm that we are not ready. Hallelujah. Before we had overflow, overflow chairs were outside. To him that order his conversation aright. Will I show the salvation of the Lord? To him that order his conversation aright. Will I show the salvation of the Lord? To him that ordereth his conversation aright. Will I show the salvation of the Lord? Somebody say amen. Next thing we saw with the bees is called unity. Unity. Oneness. The bees, they have very strong, what, what you call strong, positive social life. They live in families. They live in colonies. They live in unity. The strength of their impact is rooted in the strength of their unity. How much honey can one bee produce? But when there are plenty, the impact is much. Anybody who wants to walk alone wants to die alone. Anybody who just wants to walk a solitary life wants to live a miserable life. The bees work together. They live together. They go. Oh my God, They get the honey together. They arrive with it together. They get the nectar together. Arrive with it together. Produce the honey together. Clean their house together. Water it in winter, in, 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 in summer together. And cool it. Heat it in winter together. A life of independence is a life of irrelevance. A life of independence is a life of insufficiency. Is God speaking here? It's a life of insufficiency. And I want to say tonight that there is a limit to the destiny of anybody who does not understand the unity. There is a limit to the destiny of anybody who does not understand working with others. There is a limit to the destiny of anybody who does not understand what it means to have a working relationship. Beloved, destinies that are solid are interconnected. Interconnected with similar solid destinies. One of the greatest aspects of the oneness, the unity, and let me call it the selflessness of the bee, is when they locate nectar. A bee flies all the way to a distant place, connects with the pollen, and then steps into the nectar. And with his proboscis, it draws out this sweet 
casting aromatic with aromatic oils into its system and it flies back to the beehive and here it arrives at the beehive and instead of settling down in the beehive it will do a dance it is called the waggle dance it has a name W A W G L E waggle in our place they may call it waga or in a in a in a language waga a waggle dance it dance with his with his tail moves it aside moves it aside moves it up moves it down in that dance it is telling everybody in the colony the distance from where he picked the nectar. Move, move. Go straight and the dance communicates distance and direction. Turn left. 100 meters. Make a turn. And get inside there. And inside the first pulling stalk, deep, that is where the nectar is. Inside the beehive, every bee has known where to connect this nectar. And all of them will fly in that direction because their brother did not hide his secret. Is God speaking to somebody here? Their brother did not hide his secret. And before you know it, everybody went in that direction and connected nectar. And they have a multiplied pool of honey. Beloved, joy is not joy until it is shared again. Joy is not joy until it is shared Joy that is not shared is sorrow. Joy is not joy until it is shared. Success is not success until it is reproduced. It is when your success gave another person success that you have succeeded. How many people will be motivated to sing, to worship? Powerful voice because of you. That is what it means. To shine alone is to be ashamed alone. Are you following what I'm saying here today? They have a way. My dear brothers and sisters, members of this Deborah generation are selfless. One of our pastors sent me a text the other day. Abraham, it's only, only a good father will have secrets and share it with his children. You are not hiding your secret. Hello. We were talking yesterday and somebody said, you don't, you, didn't, you don't owe us. You didn't owe us any explanation for the steps God is leading you to take. And yet, you decided to let us know do you understand what I'm talking about? There are things I have taught you. Some, as I'm knowing it, I'm sharing it. If there is anything that I know that I haven't said, somebody told me, I said, what about the operation, prophetic and other things? I said, we all learn it. It is not success until it is reproduced. It's a useless level of impact that does not generate impact for others. Riches is not riches until you are reaching people. Prosperity without generosity is adversity. 
is calamity. Am I communicating? I want somebody to live here tonight and dance what good dance. Hey! Let somebody know what gave you the victory. Let somebody know what changed your story. Let somebody know what changed your status. Let somebody know what gave you your breakthrough. Let somebody know the reason why you are now smiling instead of frowning. Let somebody know. Stand up on your feet. Look at your neighbor and say, Will you dance me your wagu dance? Shaka pakatabalaba. Stand up on your feet, people. Look at someone and say, Will you dance me your wagu dance? Show me some things. Show me some things. Show me how you did some things. Show me how you succeeded. Show me your secret. Yesterday, I saw mom in ministry under fire. She said somebody here is being healed of blindness. Five or more people were healed on the spot without prayer. She's just standing there. As if she's not serious. And the things were happening. In the office later on, I said, Can you lay hands on me, ma? I said to her, I said, I, I, I am the one that have been laying hands on you. It's now time for you to lay it back on me. She said, Why? Under which unction did I stand? She said, all I did was to stand on the altar and then make demands on the anointing that is at the back of the commission and I'm flowing. Are you following what I'm saying here today? And I stood there jumping, dancing, doing everything. And somebody told me, said, your excitement was very electric while the service was gone. But nobody knew what I was calculating. So if this is, is, is holding, is happening at this rate that I'm about to relax small. <laughs> Instead of coming every healing service, I will just sit down in some and watch things happen and then conclude at the end. The reason why the horse gives birth to children so that it can relax waste. Many children, the donkey reproduces so that its waist can relax from load. The children will help him carry load. I was genuinely excited. And I, I see the reality of the reproducibility of mantle and grace. The reality of reproducing mantle and reproducing grace. It doesn't take anything. What you share spreads. What you distribute multiplies. I have never reduced by because I laid hands on somebody and the person became anything. I've never seen a reduction because I taught anybody something that I knew. Never. Never. The oil that was poured into the vessel did not reduce the oil. It multiplied the oil. It did not finish the oil. The oil could not finish. It was the vessel that finished. It is childish mentality to know it and hide it. It is, it is the mentality of limitation to have it and hide it. In the days of John Wesley, there was a man called George Whitfield. They were contemporaries. John Wesley preached and, and George Whitfield preached. George Whitfield preached with the voice of electricity. He was more electric than John Wesley. 
they were ministering at the same time. But George Whitfield did not do what John Wesley did. John Wesley did two major things. One, he, multi he reproduced himself into people. He held class meetings, trained people in ministry, and established churches. Over 300 years ago, John Wesley has died. Or more. But his work has not, couldn't die. Because he distributed himself. Methodist church in Nigeria is almost 170 years. In Nigeria, they are spreading. Yes, they are spreading now like wildfire. Because many years ago, a man decided that what he carried, he, couldn't, he shouldn't keep it. Two, three women in history shook the world to my notice. Maria Woodward Eater. Amy Semple McPherson. Catherine Kuhlman. Maria carried a very brutal judgmental unction. You can point at a person and he would, go, he would go under power and not just fall under power, die. Those who opposed her many times. Sit down. He told one man, sit down. The man didn't sit down. He was some assaulted. Maria would want it. Amy Semple McPherson. First Square Gospel Church. And of course, Catherine Kuhlman, the miracle woman. Of these three, the most lasting of impact, a Missemple McPherson, Four Square Gospel Church, is there till tomorrow. In the year of 1925, this woman started the, the Bible school and trained 1,250 ministers per year. Per year. Over 1,200 ministers, he was pouring herself into the people. Whatever be the secret of ministry, the secret of impact, the secret of church, the secret of God, and churches were planted. Till Jack Hayford is from Four Square Gospel Church. Yes, till today, Hayford is, is Four Square. Matthew Ashimolo went to Four Square Bible School in London. Notable ministers worldwide, a miracle ministry. Came out of that woman. She's gone, but the world did not go. Why? She refused to hide, to hold it, shed it. You, you, you are going places. That amen is too paralyzed. Look at your neighbor. Say, dance me your wagu dance. I want to know some of your secrets. Show me how you can sing like that. Because we refuse to dance the Wagu dance for our brethren. Many died in affliction. Many died in irrelevance. Many were finished by the devil. If God made you to have money, why don't you show people money ways? Why don't you show money ways? If there is fire in your bones, show people the secret of such pepperish fire. Anywhere I go, I preach as if it's... When I went to Buttercourt, I didn't hide anything. Bam! I shared things that... Things I shared that I didn't share in pastor's meeting. Eh? I, it, I just... Bam! Take it. This is how to hear the voice of God. Ask him. Lord, what are you saying? Everything. When we went to Abba, bang. Secrets of walking in authority. I've never preached it anywhere. Pick the tape. And I'm telling you things now. And you have not told me anything. <laughs> and there are things you know. <laughs> yeah, there are things you know you are hiding. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm sharing my own. You are not sharing your own. Which means you have to be bigger, isn't it? It's a new day for you. Please, I want us to come to the point. I've seen a major secret in the in, 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 in connecting the mind of God is love for people. 
love for people. There are many times I am praying for somebody with passion. And inside the prayer is prophecy. Inside the prayer, direction is coming. Love, unity, oneness is the secret of the Deborah generation. Generation. Beloved, don't let others die because they could not have access to what you know. Please enlarge your heart. Elderly people teach the younger ones. More mature in ministry, teach the upcoming. More mature in, in spiritually, teach the upcoming ones. It doesn't take anything from you, it enlarges your life. The Deborah generation of leaders are those who share what they see. Father, we thank you for tonight. Leave the two hands. Right in this crowd are people who say to me, Pastor, the first thing I want from God is a life that is ordered before God. A spiritually ordered life. I don't even have a spiritual life at all. Or a life upside down in this array. I need help from God. Wherever you are in this assembly, you will pray this prayer with me and say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I need your help in my life. Come into my life, Jesus, and make me a new person. Today, I have decided to follow you, Lord, no turning back. From today, I go forward ever and backward never. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Have your way in my life. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. The Lord bless you. Please remain standing. As many as prayed that prayer and you meant it, can I see your hand lifted? One, two, three. You pray that prayer. God bless you. I've got my mind made up. Quickly step forward here and let's pray with you. Pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Deliver me from the power of sin. In Jesus' name. Father, I ask that the hold of sin be broken of his lives. Help them to live for you. In Jesus' name.